the last session we were discussing uh, a lot about the protocols, the security of protocols and uh, we were talking about the authentication mechanisms that were introduced to improve the security of wireless access uh, networks. In this session we will talk about wireless access points in general. Okay. Most of you would be managing a wireless access point at home because it wireless as, as, as you know provides a lot of convenience in mobility. Okay. So, you can move inside the house as long as your wireless access point has excellent signal strength you do not have to worry about connectivity not true with ethernet anyways. Okay. So, what are these wireless access points? Okay. These are st stations okay, to which users can connect and if a hacker or a forensic analyst can get access to a wireless access point then interception of data packets becomes very easy. It is a layer 2 device similar to uh, the interception that we do for ethernet we can also do the interception for wireless LAN also. Okay. The advantage of wireless access points is that so you can categorize them as those wireless access points that you use at home and then you can also categorize wireless access points that are used by enterprises and this wireless access points can be in the form of a hierarchy. Okay. You can also bridge access points. So, if you, if you look at your manual user manual that comes along with your wireless access points it gives you almost all the features uh, that you can use with access points. Okay. Uh, uh, from a forensic point of view the, the wireless access points provide logging features. Uh, if you take the enterprise then the logging features are really high I mean uh, they provide support for SNMP and other things. So, uh, in fact the enterprise level wireless access points provide much more features and if you buy it from some vendors okay, they also give you software uh, along with these devices to for security monitoring and things like that. So, uh, the other thing that this wireless access points in general okay, even you can do it for the home networks. And in fact, I mean those who are very concerned about security in your home networks uh, what you should do actually so that external people do not log in is that you should actually um, take the ethernet address okay, and then put it as a filter for your device. So, that you can use whatever IP address you want it will not matter, but only those devices with those ethernet address will actually uh, be able to access your access points. So, that is something that uh, uh, if you want a secure network you have to do okay. uh, and it, many of the wireless access points devices like uh, D-Link or, 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 or Cisco's devices okay, they, they actually provide you this kind of uh, facility. The other facility that is provided by the access points is DHCP service. Uh, I think we, we had seen all these kinds of service uh, in, in, the, in the introductory session itself. Okay. Plus, they also sometimes some of these wireless access points act as routers. Okay. They provide support for SNMP uh, which is very good for triggering alerts and things like that. And uh, sometimes okay, uh, these access points can also act like NATs. Okay. So, it is like even, even though they are layer 2 devices they provide uh, services from layer 2, 3 and 4 and, and there, is a, there is a combination of services that these kind of access points provide. Okay. They, they are more than just switches okay, that are used in the ethernet. Okay, so, 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 switches sometimes can be dumb uh, whereas, this access points okay, they have much more intelligence uh, embedded in them. Therefore, the amount of logs that you get out of the access points are, are really much higher than what you get out of a switch. Now, why should we investigate a wireless access point? Okay? One, uh, the locally stored logs of the access points okay, will have the, the connection items that are being made. Okay, whether the authentication was done uh, was a success or a failure and, al and also other uh, local uh, activity. Okay. For example, what is the IP address that has been leased okay. because this includes a DHCP server it could, it could also tell you what is the IP address that was leased and for how long it was leased and all those things. Okay. So, sometimes I, I have a, a PC and I connect to an access point okay. and then I move over to another access point. I mean if, if you look at uh, this this is called mobility. Okay. So, it is not necessary that I should I should be always be connected to one particular access point I can actually move around between two or three access points. Okay. What could happen is that if these access points are configured properly 
okay they could also provide the uh, the necessary information about the physical movement of the person because if if i know a person has been attached to a laptop and uh, and that laptop has a specific ethernet address then wherever this laptop moves along with the person can be tracked with this kind of uh, access points okay and uh, so this in forensic uh, investigations will help you to identify where all this person has moved okay so usually people move around to do some kind of hacking activity okay so so if you you could track the physical movement of the person if i could uh, use this kind of data now uh, Okay, you might ask me a question. So, sir, I mean, we, we know that uh, we could spoof the Ethernet address as well as we could spoof the IP address. So, how can you do it? Well, I mean, these are all possibilities. Okay, so if 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 a person is technologically good enough to spoof these addresses and all that, okay, yes, it becomes much more difficult to handle these kind of cases. Okay, now the other advantage of using uh, these logs from access points is that. Okay, so you could identify how the attacker had gained access to the network. For example, I had enabled a peep or some kind of authentication mechanisms. Okay, so I'll be able to tell you at what time the uh, the the attacker tried to log into my machine. Okay, and to what site he tried to connect, etc. So, using this kind of um, 802.1 xbx authentication protocols will also help you. And many of the companies actually have directory services and they use tacax or radius or diameter kind of protocols to provide authentication kind of services so so uh, this the, the, the logs authentication logs along with these kind of movements will actually help you establish what has happened okay so one uh, great problem i mean is see many of the times uh, the network protocols use uh, text messages and uh, the hackers actually use this small uh, what should i say i mean these text messages are part of legacy as well as you know when i go to a software development person i would rather have xml files rather than uh, some binary files for exchanging data between two modules because it provides more flexibility and independence etc 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 but then this causes huge damage with respect to network security because if i start sending text messages and uh, these text messages are not encrypted then what could happen imagine a situation if i am an hacker okay i would access one of these access points because i know access points are the place where a lot of data pass through okay and once i log into the access point i might put some kind of a malware okay into the access points especially these malware could get triggered if they see for example some kind of text data say let us say uh, a text data is deposit 5000 rupees into my account okay now if i sit after an atm uh, after the atm because from the atm every data goes via some kind of a switch or a hardware device now if i am able to hack that hardware device so even though i might type 5000 rupees in my keyboard on the atm if i have a software sitting behind the atm okay on the on the atm device okay and it instead of 5000 whenever my account is typed instead of 5000 sends something as 550000 so today you have cash deposit machine so i could put 500 rupees but then if if you could write a malware or some software inside that just adding one more zero and sending it as a text message because anyway you are going to send it as a text message okay so this kind of text messages lead to lot of problems and believe me there have been attacks happening okay based on this kind of uh, loopholes okay so whenever you are on a public medium i mean one of the general rules for security is okay people invent lot of protocols but many of them do not take into account security as one of the parameters in fact uh, in many of the ietf rfcs okay finally they had added something known as security considerations and that section is not given much importance so you develop a protocol without giving any security consideration that's exactly what is happening in the internet so internet was not designed to have security as its feature security was just an add on that was put into the net these are all some of the reasons why security was we say it's put as an add on so they were, if you are very happy sending just text messages instead of encrypting them and you know that the protocols like smtp actually send only text messages so it's very easy to attack in fact not only attack manually i can also write proxy libraries then place them into the device 
and these libraries will take care of attacking the network. So, as I discussed before, there are different types of access points. So, if you take enterprise access points, then these enterprise access points provide much more features than features than the consumer end access points. Okay. So, if for example, uh, the enterprise access points can provide you performance monitoring capabilities, it can provide active access audit of access logs and then centralized authentication mechanism can be provided like, like using radius or tech access or something. So, where whenever the authentication happens, it comes to the access point and the adder points goes to an external server, okay, authorizes the user and then comes back. Okay. So, what sort of evidence can be collected from WAP? Okay. So, there are three types of evidences that are collected from a wireless access point. One is the volatile evidences, the other is the persistence evidence and the third is the off system, uh, off system uh, issues. Okay. So, off system essentially it is aggregation of the logs and things like that and, and, and where you have authenticated etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, that is that that's the easiest part. Okay. Persistence storage is uh, Cisco for example, in Cisco devices you can do something known as show running config and things like that and then uh, take the configuration of the device. So, when you do forensic analysis you not only have to identify who has act, but you might have to tell the organization what are all the corrective actions that the organization can take. Now, for example, if there has been configuration breakdown, okay, so you could tell the organization that this is not the way it should have been configured, it should be configured in such and such a way. So, for the all these data you need the operating system image or the bootloader image or the configuration image. Okay. For example, uh, people would usually forget to upgrade the operating system. Okay. So, vendors give a lot of patches, but people do not bother about putting those patches. See, because uh, what happens in, the, in these kind of places where you need lot of security is that you must be upgrading the system quite frequently to fix any security loopholes. Okay. So, for that you need this persistent evidence because then if for example, I say that a security patch has been provided for 1.1 and my OS that is running is 1.0, then obviously the corrective measure is to bring in place a process by which uh, security loopholes can be plugged immediately. Okay. This kind of forensics activity is not only detecting what went wrong and how it went wrong and all that, it is to some extent you should also provide uh, means for correcting the issues. Okay. So, coming to all volatile uh, kind of evidence, okay, there are bunch of stuff as discussed here. Okay, running configuration is volatile. See, sometimes people want to change some configuration, see everything is fine, but then they forget to save the configuration. So, in Cisco routers, you can change the running configuration and finally, you, many people forget to save the configuration. Then you have to restart the whole process again. I mean, if you are a network administrator, you would know about the, the problem with this. But then uh, this volatile information includes a DHCP lease agreements, assignments and then routing tables, etc. Routing tables tend to change depending on the routing protocol, what the routing protocol gets as data. So, these are bunch of uh, volatile evidences. So, when you are working with uh, network forensics of access points, you have to consider the group the evidences into three parts and collect it accordingly. The most important forensic activity that someone might do, a uh, network forensic expert might do is the spectrum analysis. Now, there are some issues in spectrum analysis, see country based issues are there. Okay, US only allows uh, channels 1 to 11 in its routers, whereas Japan uses 14th channels. Okay. So, if I can see what I can do is I can have a device which works on all the 14 channels. But what I will do is I will take data from channel 1 to 11 and then send it via 12, 13 and 14. Okay. And if you see it is very difficult to discover that there is data leaks that are happening. So, you need to be aware of as a forensic expert you need to be aware and, and in this case there is no way you are going to identify because if yours is only a 1 to 11 channel uh, router which you bought in the US and not a Japanese router, uh, you, you really have a problem on doing the forensic activity itself. Okay. So, so, this type of issues are not a problem in wired networks. So, wireless networks there are, there, are, there, are, there are slightly more issues. So, the another example of issues in wireless networks is something known as a greenfield mode. Okay, 802.11 device operating at greenfield mode are not visible to 802.11a, 11b or 11g networks. So, that means someone can be still in your network, but you may not be able to see him at all. Okay. So, you might have to look at uh, uh, hardware based uh, analysis. Okay. So, there could be hardware devices which can do all this, uh, this spectrum analysis okay. 
and along with a software solution something like net survey or kismet etc so so this as a network forensic expert you need to be aware that there are certain channels which may not be visible to you so when you do forensics you have to look at all the channels okay and get the uh, logs out of the channels because collecting evidence itself is a big problem in uh, wired networks the other part is that you can actually do passive evidence acquisition okay so wireless cards must also have something known as a monitor mode and it's better you purchase some wireless cards in order to solve the previous problem that we discussed okay you can collect lot of information like you can collect the broadcast ssids then you can collect the wap mac addresses and encryption algorithms etc what are the encryption algorithms that are supported or used etc okay and then you can also collect the um, uh, client mac addresses okay and uh, coming to the analysis okay you should be able to analyze okay uh, what are all the associations what are all the probe responses then what are all the beacons that are there okay can you find unauthenticated traffic authenticated traffic then authenticated and as, and, and those traffic that is associated with the particular authentication can you find out malicious traffic etc etc Sim the analysis is more or less similar to what we do with wired networks except that you are going to talk about beacon association and things like that okay and uh, the tools that we previously used like t shark etc wire shark etc can be used to find out okay all these options okay so here is an example if you want to find out a wap then i just have to look search for uh, wlan's zeros uh, parameter 0x80 and then if you want to search for encrypted frames you just say zero the parameters it be 08 and what wlan of 1 should be 0x40 so then you can find out what type of encryption etc similarly if you want to count the number of data frames you can use t shark okay and uh, uh, what we would suggest is that okay so go to this link that is given that www.wireshark.org okay and it talks about uh, what are the ways in which Wireshark and T-Shark can be used for WLAN management. Okay, this itself is a specific, a particular huge area. Okay, so collecting frames in wired network is different from collecting frames in wireless networks, as we have seen. So this has a lot of parameters and things like that. Okay, so uh, one of the things that you should know is what are the types of attacks that usually happen in wire wireless networks. Okay, sniffing is as usual it can happen both in wired and wireless. the other difference is that one is the rogue wireless access point see in your organization let us say you have a access point by name some organization one okay what i could do is i could bring a router from my home okay make the uh, association id as organization one and then give more strength for this router and keep it now any guy who comes and will think that whatever router you have brought is company's router okay you and you hide it somewhere okay so they, they looking at the signal strength usually what happens uh, your device connects to the signal strength that is really good so yours is a best router that is available so everyone will start connecting to you and once people start connecting to you you can start getting their data i think we acquisition of evidence is very easy okay so this rogue wireless access points can have these are unauthorized wireless devices that extend the local network and often for end users convenience and and essentially i mean what you could do is you could just play with it if you get access to all the people's data okay so there are other things that you can do as i told you playing with the channels using channel 14 for sending your data and then one of the most important stuff is known as wireless port knocking so what it does is that uh, say i see a particular pattern of data that comes in to me and immediately what i do is i just Uh, if if particular once a particular sequence of ports are opened, then I open up my software, okay? Because I scan for what are the kinds of port that I would like to see. Once I see those kind of ports, I open that. Uh, I mean, I I what I do is I I actually ra start running my software, okay? It's a sort of a root kit, okay? This is exactly what I told you uh, in the previous uh, two slides back, where someone can go and hack some kind of a switch. okay and uh, do this so if the switch looks at i'm trying to scan certain number of ports then my software will get activated and then start attacking 
there are also something known as evil uh, twin attack i mean which is similar to the rogue access point see the rogue wireless access point is actually uh, is what should i say your organization has a legal router uh, wireless access point for extending the range of your router whereas this evil twin is i do it with a malicious user as a malicious user okay so so in this way okay it's it's sort of a man in the middle attack okay so what i do is i connect i bridge my wireless access point to some other network but then get the data from you and then send it to this network so that can be done and final one what we can do is web cracking okay so the difference between uh, the evil twin attack and the the rogue access point is that the rogue access point could be installed by the company itself okay and uh, and and this uh, evil twin is you actually uh, install maliciously to get malicious data you install the same web okay web cracking is something as i told you artel ng can be used for web cracking the other things that we can use is locating the wireless network see what you can do is uh, you can actually once i know the signal strength and other things i'll be able to ga uh, gather the station descriptors such as mac address etc and what you can do is you can start plotting where your devices are okay there are a lot of software that allow you to do the plotting okay this uh, basically why people use the software is to provide wireless devices at the right places okay so they do something known as a wireless kind of scanning and then study the spectrum what is the signal strength how many users are there and so on so that i can minimize the number of routers and provide maximum coverage now the same strategy can be used in other way okay to 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 find out which device is close to me to identify a person and all the where where the person is etc so all these things can be done by locating by the idea of placing the wireless devices in, in a particular place in organization to get maximum benefit out of wireless network can also be used to track the wireless devices or the rogue wireless devices that are connected to the network so both can be done so there are many software which you can do it okay so the software uses rssi uh, transmit rate etc uh, net stumbler is one software that is available only on windows okay uh, it supports gps integration so the other one is kismet skyhook uh, which is a wireless positioning system and so on okay there are also other software which you can use for uh, this kind of activity like kismac and skyhook etc now before i end the session i just want to uh, tell you about this website okay so it is called github.com slash chris sanders and packets so if you want to gain more expertise until now we are looking at evidence acquisition and then we are looking at how to analyze the packets so this website is has has lot of packet dumps okay which he has provided the the person the owner of the website has provided free of cost okay you can actually download this this pcap files and then have your wireshark open these pcap files and then start studying okay or start doing the forensics he tells you what type of attack he has logged the packets for so try to find out how you can find out those attacks okay using the dumps so as usual our uh, reference book is this network forensics uh, tracking hackers through cyberspace okay so we will in the next session what we'll do is we'll do a case study now in this case study what we are going to do is we are going to actually use a tool okay so until now we had uh, log, uh, talked about t shark and other things but we'll be actually using a tool to identify and tell and show that how work can be done easily by network forensics if they go for some kind of tools to do their job thank you very much mm -hmm.